Tornado Awareness Week in Wisconsin. Plasma reco from recovered COVID-19 patients used for treatment. Election results for Sheboygan County races. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Pfister, and this is Community News Review for Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. Monday's COVID-19 report from the Sheboygan County Division of Public Health contained a surge of right kind recoveries since Sunday. We're up to five for a total of 19 who have overcome their coronavirus infection. One additional case in the 20 to 39 age range brought the total positive cases in the county to 37. Of the 16 active cases, four are hospitalized, two residents connected with the Sunny Ridge outbreak are the sole casualties of the pandemic in the county. And 570 persons tested for the coronavirus came back negative. As surveillance of the Sunny Ridge outbreak continues, reports indicate that of the 19 total cases connected to the facility, 10 are active and seven have recovered. Statewide, another 87 case, positive cases were added, bringing the Wisconsin total to 3,428. St. Nicholas Hospital has announced that they will continue accepting homemade mask cloths now through Friday, April 17th, between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. daily. A collection bin is located outside the hospital's chapel entrance off of Taylor Drive and more information on standards and more can be found at stnicholashospital.org. As of today, Monday, April 13th, the Wisconsin Department of Health Services has suspended the Medicaid pur purchase plan work requirement for applicants and members in order to protect health and safety during the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite the suspension, members still need to communicate with their agency about changes in employment even if the change is temporary. Along with informing of any changes in income, assets, medical expenses, number of household members, or job status within 10 days of the change. Members will receive a letter of notification of this change and will receive another once the work requirement is reinstated. Governor Tony Evers has declared this week as Tornado and Severe Weather Awareness Week in Wisconsin. But because of the COVID-19 outbreak, this year's tests will be different. Don Robinson of Oneida County Emergency Management tells WXPR Radio that there are statewide tornado drills set for 1.45 p.m. on Thursday, April 16th but the approach will be different with a virtual tornado drill. You will not hear any alerts that trigger the NOAA weather radios, and you will not hear the warnings from the National Weather Service. The alerts will not be broadcast on TV and radio, and they will not be broadcast on the wireless emergency alerts that go through the cell phones, but instead it is a virtual. She says officials hope folks think about what they would do in their own homes should severe weather strike. She says the messages will come across the social media to discuss their shelter sheltering plans. Robinson says even though the systems that alert you in the event of the storm will not be going off this week, they are tested regularly. A transformation of Sheboygan's curbside collection of trash and recyclables has been in the works for months and now is getting its final financial boost to make the change less expensive. The Recycling Partnership is the, a national nonprofit organization that works with corporate partners to help improve recycling nationwide. 
and at it, along with the PepsiCo Foundation, has awarded a $296,000 grant to help Sheboygan transition from bagged to automated cart system. Sheboygan will use the grant to purchase these carts, which are now being prepared for the launch on May 4th. A Plymouth woman of the six finalists competing to be the 73rd Alice in Dairyland will have to wait a bit longer than anticipated due to the coronavirus pandemic. Erica Helmer will compete in the finals now rescheduled to be held on Friday, June 19th with the crowning of Wisconsin's new agricultural ambassador scheduled for Saturday, June 20th. To maintain appropriate social distancing, these events will be live streamed for public viewing, including a live Q&A session Friday and the final on Saturday. Erica Helmer represents the seventh generation to work and live on her family's registered Holstein farm, currently serves customers at Genetic Visions ST and coaches the Sheboygan County 4-H dairy judging team. A COVID-19 patient at UW Hospital in Madison has received the first transfusion of plasma from a patient who donated it after recovering from the virus. Gary Dalgard of Sun Prairie and his wife are both donating plasma. There are so many people out here doing so much and people in the medical field that are doing so much for the rest of us. It is nice to feel that we can play some small role in giving back and helping a little bit, Delgard said. The UW School of Medicine and Public Health, SMPH, and UW Health are part of a nationwide effort to study whether plasma from people who have recovered from COVID-19 given to patients who are seriously ill with the disease can help shorten the duration or severity of their illness. William Hartman is a UW Health anesthetist anesthesiologist heading to the convalescent plasma study at UW. Hartman said that as of Monday, about a dozen people who have recovered from COVID-19 have donated plasma through the American Red Cross in Madison to be used to treat patients at the UW hospital. And finally, we saw 50% voter turnout in Sheboygan County for the spring elections that were held April 7th. The ballots were counted on Monday night after all of the absentee ballots were collected. Nancy Neubauer and Aileen Dalk earned themselves seats at the Cedar Grove Ozaki School Board. Incumbents Daniel Grunwald and Corinne Fieldman retained their roles as Glenbula trustees. Sharon Riley and Tara Mikulsk beat out Patrick Johnson for seats on the Kohler School Board. In Random Lake, Ryan Rathke and Charles Mueller saw the most votes for the two seats on the school board. In Oostburg, Jim Swart, Terry Lemkuel, and Jack Sadaik earned the three open seats on the school board, where voters also approved a $7.5 million referendum for a new addition at the elementary school. In the races for Sheboygan City Council, incumbent Ted Wolf will keep his seat, beating his challenger Travis Gross for the District 2 seat. Incumbent Dean Decker will hold on to his seat in District 6, beating his challenger Mark Herman. And there were six districts up for Sheboygan County Supervisor were George Kulo, Fran Damp, Jacob Immel, Brian Hoffman, and William Growing. Each earned spots in their respective districts. Sheboygan Falls Mayor Randy Mayer will continue to serve, beating out challenger Tom Bigler. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Thursday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.